Welcome to the Psychedelic Passage Podcast. My name is Jimmy Wynn. I am your host. Thank you all so much for joining us in another installment and episode this week. I am recovering from uh, a little bit of sickness that debilitated me for, for quite a bit. And so if you are listening out there, I am hoping that this episode finds you in good spirits and good health. Uh, physically, mentally, and of course, in your spirit. Really grateful for you all to join us as we always try to talk about the ins and outs of therapeutic psychedelic experiences and try to couple that with tangible and actual pathways for somebody to glean a piece of information or knowledge or insight from the things that I discuss uh, as it relates to your own process. So we have a really great episode today, a, a topic that undoubtedly I think every individual explores or questions in their pursuit of healing, especially as it relates to, you know, intentionally using psychedelics to do so, which is do psychedelics affect personal relationships? You know, many folks in the uh, public sphere or mainstream are reading a lot about the positive benefit, the potential impact of psychedelics on their healing and growth. But I think there's there's actually far fewer conversations about what that process actually looks like and how it impacts your lives. Us being, you know, social creatures our relationships are some of the most important uh, aspects of our lives. And I also just want to take a moment to acknowledge folks who may be suffering in, in isolation, folks who may be feeling like they don't have a rich and deep, you know, social uh, network or a social system. I have a lot of compassion for those folks. We talk to those folks actually quite frequently, our, our concierge team, people who reach out and say, man, because I've been suffering for so long due to XYZ, a mental health condition or an ailment of, of the soul or something that happened you know, in my life, it's caused me to become so isolated from my family and friends and I don't wanna be a burden uh, upon them. And so before we dive into this episode, I just want to take a moment to share with you that if you are one of those people who are resonating with what I'm sharing, there are people out there who care. Whether they are in your life or a stranger uh, or somebody who you hop on the phone with, like our concierge team, I think it can go a really long way to just acknowledge and be open and able to receive some help and support. And so I send that possibility to you. I'm sending you a lot of compassion and a lot of love. And even if you may find yourself in, in isolation, that there may be something here in this episode, especially towards the end, when I talk about the parallel, about the self as it relates to relationships with others, I hope that there's something here for you as well. And to frame up our conversation a little bit today, you know, one of the things that we talk about quite strongly here at Psychedelic Passage is emphasizing realms of support for intentional psychedelic experiences. And oftentimes I'm thinking about professional realms of care, I'm thinking about personal realms of care, support system personal friends, family, and significant others. But what about beyond that? You know, I think that that's really the crux of our conversation today. How do psychedelic experiences impact our relationships in our everyday lives, leading up to experiences, post-experiences in the integration process? And so today we'll be examining that question that we get regularly, which is, do psychedelics affect personal relationships. Uh, for those who want the short answer, I will definitively say yes, they do. But I think that that it's it's a much deeper conversation than just a one-word answer. I do believe that psychedelics can affect personal relationships. 
but exactly how really varies from person to person. And if you hang on with me through this episode, I will be walking through a dialogue and a discourse on not only what that may look like for you, but also just some practical advice. And if you are a person wanting to explore a psychedelic experience, these are things that I wish that I had known as I started and embarked on my journey and relationship with psychedelics. And this may be controversial, what I'm about to share, but it's really honest for me. And this may be a little oversimplified, and folks may not like hearing this, but I found this really true in my life. There's really only two outcomes in relationships. Either you're growing apart, or you're growing toward each other. I truly don't believe that there is some neutral in between where a relationship on its own sustains itself in a way that is not from the efforts of each individual person. And so, you know, today I'm hoping to really talk through how psychedelics can play into this, how it can impact whether relationships are growing apart or whether relationships are growing. Um, in a deeper and more meaningful way. And before we dive into the reasons why and what this may mean for you in your own relationships, I think it's important to spend a little bit of time to lay the groundwork of important context of what a meaningful relationship is. And so one of the first concepts that I like to talk through with my own clients and folks when I have them go through a process of uh, taking inventory on the relationships is I like to think about relationships as concentric circles. So there's maybe a dot in the middle, which is you, and then an immediate circle around that, which you may consider your inner circle, family, friends, loved ones, uh, people you consider your best friends, people that you consider closest in your life. And then there is a concentric circle around that, which are maybe a layer out. And then that concentric circle expands into another circle and another circle and another circle all the way to the end when there's just people who you are socially acquainted with, right? The reason why I bring this up is because each one of those concentric circles have a different definition on what the criteria is for what constitutes a healthy relationship. So just knowing my relational distance to a person can help me to understand how do my wants and needs align to where this person is in my life. If that's not already difficult enough to to examine and navigate, another thing that's important for me to bring up is that our criteria and definition for relationships in addition to our wants and needs, they evolve over time. The relationships that we may have formed in our younger formative years may not be the criteria of which we would build and form a relationship now. I find myself in my mid-30s, I look back to my more rambunctious years And I look and think about my early 20s and a lot of people who I considered my friends, and I really look and say, okay, well, would I consider the nature of that relationship to be something uh, of depth today? Most of the time, I say, no, those were social interactions, people that I went out with, people that I you know, XYZ had recreational moments with. There are very few people who actually had a a substantive relationship in my life at that time, right? And so, you know, not to say that there aren't people who I've known for a very long time who I hold very near and dear to my heart. Like I have a group of, you know, friends that I grew up with from very, very early childhood that I'm very grateful and blessed that we keep up with each other's lives, we support each other. But the way that our relationship looks now is way different than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago, which leads me to, you know, another context of meaningful relationships is that 
relationships are really a two-way street. I think that already when we're thinking about psychedelics in this American Western society, it's very easy for us to think, okay, well, what am I going to get out of psychedelics? Like what's in it for me? And you know, what can I learn and what can I glean and what can I, you know, use to grow from these experiences? And relationships have this a similar parallel. It's not just about you and your wants and your needs. It's also about the other person on the other side of the relationship, their wants, their needs, but more importantly, what they're available for and how they're able to show up. Humans are just messy and just being a human is a hard venture for anybody to, to, to really take on. I also think at the same time, as I mentioned earlier, that relationships are some of the most beautiful aspects of, of our lives. And so, you know, what I share with that is that relationships are maybe not just a two-way street, but it's like a multi-angled street where there's a lot of different uh, directions and layers and uh, pathways for folks to explore and engage in being in good relationship with each other. Now, one thing that I share uh, in previous episodes is that there's a lot of parallelism here. In a way of building a good relationship with the psychedelic medicine, you may then have this process of coming into good and better relationship with yourself, and then therefore being able to step into a good and better relationship with the world around you and also the people in it. And so bringing this back to psychedelics a little bit, it's pretty clear to me that any introspective process can affect our relationships. I think any process where an individual is willing to do a deep dive into themselves, whether it's to navigate trauma, whether it's to address an ailment or a symptomatic mental health issue, or whether it's to just be curious about themselves and learn and grow, this is why I call this work ceremony, because it's just a sacred process to be able to learn about the depths of yourself. And so in that process, you expect to come out of psychedelic experiences a little bit different. And so, of course, your world and your relationships can potentially be different as well. So one of the things that I share is that I always say that in order to affect and improve your relationship with others, you must first start with your relationship with yourself. The other part that I think is important to share, and this is my opinion and belief, and I'd be curious to know, I know I'm saying some things that folks may or may not agree with, and I would love to hear your, your input. So please uh, leave a comment or you know reach out to our team to provide some feedback. But I share a lot with my clients when they are trying to affect their external world, when they're saying, how do I show up and be a better brother? Or how do I show up and be a better mother or boss or be a better citizen in my community? I always share with them, well, what are ways that you are serving that need within yourself? What are ways that you are examining and exploring your relationship with yourself? I'll speak from the I to say that internally for me, it's taken a lot of time to cultivate a really healthy relationship with myself. And even then, there are parts of me, the hypercritical part of me, the part that tries to self-sabotage, the part that's really proud of myself, the part that brings on shame and guilt, the part that is bold enough to step forward and take risks, right? This is the whole microcosm of the self. It's taken a long time to look into all of the different parts of myself and realize, okay, how do I get into right relationship, healthy and deep relationship with each of those parts? My wounded child, 
the part of me that dreams, the part of me that serves, the part of me that's selfish, right? And so this is why things like uh, parts work and internal family systems are so applicable to psychedelic work because it causes us to examine ourselves among these different dimensions, right? And so I, I bring that to say that psychedelics can certainly be a tool for this. But before I start to talk about, okay, how, how does this actually play out in relationships, I can't help but spend a little bit of time to talk about the nuance of the self. Many of us, for example, have really, really poor negative and poor negative self-talk. I think that there are parts of us that are just like naysaying and kind of breaking down and over criticizing kind of makes sense also because of the society that we live in, where you look online and it's much easier and much more abundant to see negativity and criticism as opposed to people propping themselves up or lifting up others for the sake and pursuit of trying. And when you're talking about healing with or without intentional psychedelic use, trying is the most important part. And so when I talk to folks after a psychedelic experiences and we go into, you know, integration processes, I'm sharing with them quite commonly two of my golden rules of integration, which sound really silly. Sounds a little hallmarky, to be honest with you, but it is so, so wild how terrible we are at doing these two things. One is to take care of our needs, and our needs may be physiological, our needs may be uh, physical, like eating, drinking, moving our body, getting rest, meditating, things like that. But there are also emotional needs. There are also a societal and sociological needs. And so you can see the parallel in why I'm bringing this up, because I think that relationships are the same. There are some relationships that fill a specific need, a need to be wanted, a need to be validated, a need to not be lonely. There are then higher order needs that... I think can also enrich and deepen relationships. So here I'm talking about the level of depth of relationships, the need to be in service in community, the need to be fully seen with all of my flaws and all of my gifts, for an example. And as you move up this chain of higher order needs in the pursuit of deepening your relationships, not everybody is going to be able to meet and fulfill those needs. And so that supports what I'm saying about relationships are either continually growing apart and decaying, or they're continually growing toward each other, toward each individual. And so, you know, to take it back to psychedelics, if you find yourself in a place of having this really deep explorative process of the self, well, of course, your relationships may shift and adjust and all of that. But I would say that there are some really tangible and practical tools, some thoughts and exercises, both in preparation and in integration and in the actual experience itself, that can really prime you to have a very intentional and thorough process to this. The other thing that I'll note with psychedelics is that many people come out of psychedelics in a variety of different states. There are folks who move through psychedelic experiences and they feel so grounded and connected and one with all living beings, and that's really beautiful. And there are also people who come out needing a little bit of support. They come out maybe a little bit messier than they had came in. Maybe they had uncovered something that was really uncomfortable, or maybe they had moved through a process of navigating and renegotiating their traumas, for an example. That's really hard then to come out and feel like, oh, I have all of my stuff together. So 
creating a little bit of acceptance around however you may come out of psychedelic experiences, I think is first and foremost important. But also this is where those layers of care can really come in. What I share with folks is that psychedelic experiences are very nonlinear and so are the processes to healing. So sometimes you come out of psychedelic experiences a little bit more destabilized. Maybe you need a little bit more support. But I share that with folks who see through the process. And I'm not just talking about the process of ingesting a few grams of psilocybin mushrooms and then waiting for the drugs to wear off and then hoping to be different. I'm talking about seeing through the process of becoming whole again, which is a lifelong process. Hate to break it to you. It's a lifelong process. And for folks who really want to do that, then I, then I find that their relationships are going to evolve you know, over time. Now, there's pros and cons to both types of outcomes. Folks who are feeling super blissful and connected to all and feeling like they're being guided and there are signs from the universe, well, that could lead to susceptibility. That can also lead to people being highly suggestible to different influences of, of people in a way giving up their power towards whatever that connection or that thing is. Oh, the universe put this person in my life for this reason. And so therefore I must follow it. Right. And, and, and a lot of people feel that conversely for folks who come out of psychedelic experiences who may have a little bit more of a challenge experience. It may be really hard to connect with people. It, you might say, wow, who's going to understand this process that I'm going through? And how is anybody going to understand? Because I don't even understand right now. And maybe I feel so needy. Maybe I feel so helpless to even acknowledge that I need this type of care and this type of help. And so you can see how in both of those scenarios, which I'm just kind of I've seen this in real life. I've seen it in my own life, but I'm just using this theoretically to put markers on two opposite ends of the spectrum here. What I share is what's required in both of those processes is honesty, honesty about what you need at the time in relationships and in your own support and discernment. Who are the people who are there to help and support me through? some of these things, right? And so when I think about relationships then, what I find with psychedelics is that it has the potential to cause us to, I think, if done properly, to do this in a really healthy and good way, but to challenge our beliefs and our values and our principles. I think that's just good to do anyways. I think anybody who is monofocus and super absolute and unbounded to change oftentimes may have a lot of, of, of friction in their life because life is just full of constant change. So in a way, by examining and challenging your own principles, values, what you care about, how you're showing up in the world, you can also let go of the things that no longer serve you and in a different way reinforce and double down on the things that do. So if you're going through some type of a fundamental change, a value shift, a, a perspective shift, which many people are actually seeking psychedelics in the pursuit of doing that to shift my orientation a degree or two over here so that I could look at my life in a different way and possibly glean some insights, well, then relationships will follow suit with that. Another thing that I, I, I want to share that's been a helpful concept for me, I forget where I learned this, but it was something in the tune of every relationship has a bank account, essentially. And each person in a relationship is either depositing or withdrawing from that emotional or relational bank account. 
Sometimes one person is depositing more than the other. Sometimes that role changes where the other person deposits more than the other person. Sometimes it's very even and reciprocal. Some people find an abundance of of that emotional balance in, in their bank account, and some others find it constantly overdrawn, uh, especially in coercive or abusive and unhealthy relationships. And by the way, if you find yourself in that, I really, really do hope that you find the courage to go out and get support and seek help because there are people for sure who are there to help you see through and navigate potentially dangerous relationships as well. Just a little caveat there for folks. So if you are investing a lot over time in your relational bank account, then those returns compound. What I mean by that is when there comes a time where a person needs to make a big withdrawal, big life change, coming out of a psychedelic experience, the loss of a loved one due to death or some type of tragedy, does that withdrawal from that bank account cause you to go into the negative or not? And if it goes into the negative, which at times it happens, we come into conflict, we come into argument, we come into disagreement, many of which can be repaired, some of which cannot, is there an ability to get that balance positive again? So this is just a framework that I have found to be massively, massively useful to me. And I share this with you because as we're stepping into more practical advice around this, the first thing that I think is really important for folks to do is to take internal inventory with the self. And then when you're ready, take inventory with your relationships. I think taking internal inventory with the self is assessing What could improve your relationship with yourself? How do I enrich and embolden that and make sure that my relational bank account with the self is super abundant and super strong? That way, when you are, let's say, in a strain with an external relationship, then you always have that fallback of the relationship with the self. Is that relationship with the self honest? Is it true? Is there misperception there? Is it built on a foundation based on your values and principles, which can potentially strengthen and get uh, more resilient over time? Or is it built on something that's not as strong? And so, you know, these are really hard questions for anybody to ask, but I do find that psychedelics can be a really powerful tool of this internal examination. And then from there, you can take the same principles into your personal relationships and also professional relationships. Ponder and consider your relationships with others and really take note of which ones are growing, which ones are decaying, and why. Is it as simple as, oh, it's me or them? Is it that I've neglected a part of this relationship? Or is it that this person and I are changing in our perspective, in our needs, and so we are naturally growing apart? Then that may lead you to really feel into which relationships you want to invest in and which relationships may need to naturally and organically fade. Because to be quite honest with you, not all relationships are meant to last. Nothing in this life actually lasts. That's actually why things are so meaningful, because they don't last, because there is this ephemeral part of this life. It causes us to strive out and search for essence and search for importance and search for meaning, right? And so practically, what we sometimes see here is, you know, folks who may come into a psychedelic relationship and there was a small thing that they were able to tolerate or navigate within their relationship, then with the nonspecific amplifier effect of psychedelics, it becomes front and center and central focus. And then they come out of the relationship or they come out of the experience and be like, I don't know how I feel about this relationship anymore. And that's scary sometimes because this relationship is all that I've known. 
So another really, really practical piece of advice is do not make major life changes for at least 30 days after a large dose psychedelic experience. And I also think that if somebody found themselves in a place of saying like, "Mm, I need to end this relationship, whether it's with a partner, intimate person, a friend, business partner, whatever, then I also think that it's important for a person to ask themselves the question of, how do I want to look back on how I've navigated this 10 years from now? Do I want to feel like I gave every opportunity that I had to repair? Or do I feel like I've met my limit and my boundary and cannot commit to this any further? Or do I have any regret as I'm looking forward to this? These are really, really hard questions. Really, really hard questions. And just knowing that the psychedelic experience can stoke the fire of these really, really deep processes. At the same time, psychedelic experiences can be really soothing because there are many people who know these truths already about their relationships, but it might take the altered experience of a psychedelic to say, ah, now I really fully and firmly know. But just know that how abrupt or smooth those transitions are, are fully in your capability and fully in your power to do. And so what makes a difference between relationships that grow apart or grow together? Well, I really think if I boil it down to an analogy is, are the two people moving and growing in the same direction? Because parallel growth, let's say, moving in the same direction is still growing toward each other because two people are trying to hit the same future state or that same focal point. For people who are moving in opposite directions, then you could both be growing and growing on your path and doing your own individual really good work, but you're headed in different directions, which may or may not be at the fault of any individual. And so having that level of honesty with yourself, I think, is really, really important. And I hope that that last analogy that I shared is not to create a binary of saying that there are good people and there are bad people and there are only perpetrators and only victims. I do feel that the majority of folks out there are seeking meaningful and deep and fulfilling and healthy relationships. But what that looks like is different. For each person. And I think that as you move through psychedelic experiences, you have an opportunity to continually and constantly define that for yourself. And so I hope that that's helpful for us to chat through today as we're getting down towards the end of our uh, podcast episode. So I want to know what you think. Please feel free to leave a comment, message our team, message on YouTube, maybe you're responding to a snippet that we have on social. Do you agree or disagree? Do you agree that relationships are either growing apart or growing together? I'd love to hear how you found psychedelic experiences to impact your relationship for greater or for less and what that means as far as your own process for healing. So please feel free to reach out to our team. And as we wrap up today, I'd like to just take a moment to read a testimonial for somebody who went through one of our macrodose programs. They said, the facilitator is one of the most incredible, generous, kind, patient, and insightful people I've ever met, let alone had the chance to work with. She's always fully present during our sessions and has helped me uncover more about who I am in a few short months we've worked together than I'd done in years of standard therapy. And I hope that that person who has gone through our program was able to build a deeper relationship with themselves and the people that they love around them. So that wraps up our episode for this week. You can find episodes of this podcast anywhere you find podcasts, primarily Apple and Spotify. We also post the video versions up on YouTube and then put out snippets on our uh, social channels. 
And I hope that you all got some value out of this conversation here today. Here's to having deeper relationships with ourselves and deeper relationships with those that we love and the courage to let go of those relationships that no longer serve us. And I very much look forward to seeing you next time on the Psychedelic Passage podcast. 